Hi everyone and welcome to the Shibaba gameplay video. I'm Andre and I'm quickly going to show you how the game works and how the setup is done. So let's uh, start right away. Um, you can see the different components on here. We have two deck boards. Um, this one has the soldier cards, the civilian cards. This one has the structure cards and the event cards. Then we have two player boards, the Castor um, player board for player one and the SKA player board for player two. We have some tokens lying here around and some dice we are going to use. Um, the setup starts with using the black token to indicate um, the victory conditions. We are going to um, play until one player reaches 10 Paragon. That's marked in, on this tracker here, that's the Paragon tracker. So you put the black one on the spot with the 10 so that every player knows when once he reaches this point he has uh, won the game. Then we have the orange token, that's our base upgrade level token. Every player has some base upgrades he can buy during the game. Every player starts with the first column here, gives him specific defense for its base and um, some resources he gets with every turn. And then we have the yellow tokens, which will track, we will use to track our resources. Um, in the beginning, every player has as many resources as there are players, so every player gets two resources in this case, if it's a two-player game. And the green one is used to track our Paragon that we earned during the game. We don't use it at the beginning, so we put it next to the board. Um, next thing we do, we take the top uh, card from the Soldier deck and put it in the middle, that's the Arc. And the Soldier is now controlling the Arc. So, the Soldier has this blue value over here, that's the resistance value of the soldier, and that's used to determine its life points while it's in the arc. Um, so in this case the soldier has two um, life points, a resistance of two gives him two life points, and he gets an extra life point for every player. There are two players, so another two life points makes it four. Then we are going to reveal the top two cards of each deck. There are two soldiers, two civilians, we have two structures and two events. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we determine the starting player. Therefore we have um, these cards, they are actually player reference cards, but one comes in a different color, so every player gets a card, you reveal it, and the one with the green one is the starting player. In this case, the blue one player one is going to be the starting player. You can then use these cards as a reference card to see all the different phases and all the actions you can do and you can put it next to your board if you like. And now we are going to jump right into the game. So let's get started. Okay, first thing that's going to happen is we are going into the effect phase. Uh, during the effect phase the player whose turn it is will um, resolve their base upgrade effects and their card effects, if they have any cards. At the moment, no, no player has cards, so there are no card effects to handle. Um, but the base upgrade effects take effect. We are looking into the first codon over here, and the value on the bottom is the resource value that this player gets with every turn. In this case, it gets zero, but later on, when you upgrade the base, he will get more. You get one, two, three resources every turn then. Okay, so it's this player's turn now. He doesn't have any effects during the effect phase. We can directly skip the effect phase and jump into the dice phase. The dice phase is used um, to basically determine the next actions you can do. So you have these dice over here. The Paragon dice are used to gain Paragon, but they are not used right now, so we can put them aside. Um, you have these four yellow dice and the four red dice. They are resource dice and attack dice. The resource dice, they show different values from 1 to 3 and they also have blanks on them. The attack dice have attack symbols, critical attack symbols and 4 blanks on them. And when you form your dice pool, you can choose 6 dice out of these 8. Uh, so this would be um, a dice pool that gives you more resources. This would be an offensive uh, dice pool. You can also make it like 3 red and 3 yellow one and so on. But you can never have more than six dice except you have specific cards that gives you a special effect or so. And you might never have more than four dice of one color. 
or type. So to start with, I'm this player takes the four yellow dice and the two red ones. And now we are going to roll them. And every die we like, we can set aside into our so-called um, action pool. So these two I set aside and the four blanks I'm going to re-roll. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I have a last re-roll and I scored two blanks, okay. Oh, sorry, I just hit the camera. So this is the outcome of the dice phase and after we have uh, done our initial roll and up to two re-rolls, we are now into the action phase and that's the phase where you can do all the actions you want to do. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, to use the, the resource dice. I'm going to spend them. In this case, when you spend the yellow dice, the resource dice, you get as many resources as you can see uh, resource icons on it. So this one gives you two, another two, and another two makes six. Plus three, you get nine resources and I mark them on my tracker here. So I move up to 11 resources. I have used these dice and now I can do different actions. Um, I can buy cards. Let's start with that. I can buy soldier cards or civilians or structures or events. Um, buying cards is done by paying the resources marked on the spot here. So this soldier over here would cost three resources to buy. And I think I'm just going to do that. So this one is going to buy the Hermit for three resources. I remove three resources from my tracker and I take the Hermit and it's a soldier. So soldiers go into this slot over here. That's called the war host. Every time I buy something, I draw another card and reveal it. So it's available for everyone to buy. Okay. So what can I do next? Uh, soldiers would be able to attack the Ark in this case. Um, you can always attack the arc from your warhouse, but I have no attack symbols right now, so nothing to attack. I can just go and buy more cards at the moment. Um, or I could also use general actions, we call it, but I will get to them later. So first focus on buying some cards so that you can see this. So I think this one spends five more resources, going down to three, and gets the research facility. The research facility has a special effect. Every effect in the, during the effect phase, you gain two resources. You can see that it's during the effect phase because of this blue frame and this icon that corresponds with uh, this over here. And here's the icon, as you can see. So when I have that, when I control it, I put it into my base and structure cards, the yellow ones and the civilian cards, the blue ones, they are always put down here in the so-called um, add-on slots. In the beginning you only have one of these four slots available but with each level of your base you can unlock another one of them okay now i draw the top card again reveal the top one that's available to buy now i could now still buy more structures and other stuff but remember i only have this one slot available so if i want to buy another structure except uh, for example this one um, i could afford it if i buy it i would need to put it on top of this one and form a pile and only the top card of each pile is active so in this case i won't do that uh, if i would want to buy a civilian right now i would have no more space left no more add-on slot left to put it into and i'm not allowed to put um, cards of a different type on top of other cards so since this is a structure i'm not allowed to put civilians on top of it uh, only structures the soldiers are always going to the warhouse, as I said, and they can form a pile over here. Event cards, when I buy event cards, they are immediately used and then discarded. Okay, so I think in this case, um, I'm done with the turn and it becomes the next player's turn. In this case, it's the green player, player two. Um, this player does the same thing. He uses four yellow dice, four resource dice, and two attack dice. Okay, so he's got some attack symbols, also a critical one. He's going to take these and let's roll one more and a last re-roll. All right. So I'm trading in my dice. That makes eight resources, so I'm up to 10. And now I have some attacks that I can use to attack the arc, the soldier inside the arc. Therefore, I need a soldier. So I'm buying this one, let's say. Um, it costs four resources. 
down to 6. And let me explain you the soldiers. They have a power value over here. And in this case it's 4. They have a resistance value and they have a paragon value. Um, and every card has some special effects. In this case, this is a soldier that's pretty cheap for the values it has. So it has a negative effect. It gives me minus 1 reroll, basically. So next time I'm going to roll during the dice phase, I only have my initial roll and one more reroll, and I did do not get the second reroll, as long as this one is active, of course. Okay, uh, now I bought that one, and I think now I'm going to use an attack. Uh, attacks are done uh, like the following. You would need an attack symbol to perform an attack. In this case, I have one attack symbol, and I also have a critical attack symbol. Uh, if I use a normal attack symbol, I'm going to make an attack with the power equal to the red value over here. So this guy has a power of 4 when he is attacking. The critical attack symbol gives me plus 1 extra power. If I use this die, he can make an attack with power 5. I'm going to attack the arc because that's the only thing I can attack. Um, every player can only attack the middle of the, of the yeah, game table, let's say, the, the arc. Uh, from their war hosts. And once you get your own soldiers into the arc, you can attack other players from there. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I'm um, using this attack to perform a power 4 attack. This means the soldier inside the arc loses 4 life points. Since he only has 4, it would be immediately destroyed. So I just killed the soldier over here. Let's so move to the discard pile. And every time I destroy a soldier inside the arc, the soldier that I attacked with, that I used for the attack, must move into the arc. So this one goes over here. And now I'm controlling it. So you put the arrow to the player who's controlling the arc to see that he has a soldier in it. Then you calculate the life points of this guy in it. He has a resistance of 4 that gives you 4 life points, plus 1 life point for every player. Goes up to 6 then. All right. So another effect that happens, every time you destroy a soldier card, you get to roll for Paragon. Therefore you take a Paragon die, and you take as many of these dice as your soldier uh, stat says. In this case, the green value says I can use one Paragon die. So I'm going to roll that. And yeah, I get two Paragon. So I take my green token, and I mark two Paragon on my tracker over here. All right, so now I still have six resources left and I still have an attack symbol that I can use. So I can now buy stuff, I can attack stuff, and I think I'm going to buy something. I'm going to buy um, another soldier for three resources. I'm going to buy the recruit over here. Has strength two, resistance four, one paragon die, and the special effect says that every time um, he can block an attack, it must do so. I will explain that later. A new one. And now I'm going to use my second attack symbol. Since I'm in the arc, I can now attack other players. In this case, there is only one other player. I can attack this player. Why would I do that? Um, when you attack another player, you can steal Paragon from him. And you can destroy one of his add-on cards. So if I attack this player successfully, then I could steal Paragon. Since this player has no Paragon yet, I don't get anything but I could destroy the card. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm using this die to do a critical attack and this means I get my power of 4 plus 1 extra power for the critical. It's a power of 5. And then I compare it to the blue defense value of the corresponding base upgrade level. In this case the base has a defense of 3 and as long as my, as my power is equal to or higher than the defense value of the base, I can attack it. So in this case, 5 is higher than 3, I can attack the base. Um, the player now has the following options. Since this player has a soldier in its war host, it can say that this soldier blocks the attack. If the soldier blocks the attack, then I cannot steal anything, if there would be anything, and I cannot destroy any of his add-ons cards, but it could happen that the, soldier, that the soldier gets destroyed. So if this soldier blocks the attack and has a resistance of 3, um, it means that it would get destroyed because I have a power of 5 and every time 
um, the power is equal to or higher than the resistance of the blocking soldier, it's destroyed. So I now have to decide, do I block the attack or do I lose this card? Because once this attack goes through, he can destroy one card. If you compare them, this one will give me two resources in the beginning of my turn. This one will go give me only one resource, but it's a soldier. But since this was more expensive, I'm going to keep that one. And I'm blocking the attack with this guy, so he gets destroyed, put onto this card pile. Okay. Now my base is empty, I cannot block anything anymore, but uh, luckily this player does not have any more attacks left. That brings me to some of the general actions now. They are over here. They are the same for every player, but the costs for them are different from faction to faction. So in this, let me explain it to you on this, um, in this case over here for the SKA. Uh, you, the first action means for one resource you can discard any of your own cards or one of the cards over here. You can do that because you don't want another player to get a specific card and you, you prefer to, to ban it or to discard it. Uh, or you want to see if there are better cards coming to, so that you can buy them. Then you have um, another action which is called a reorganization. So for one resource in this case you can reorganize one of your piles. Remember when you buy more stuff uh, of the same types, like, let's say you buy like four soldiers, then you would have five soldiers on top of each other. Only the top one would be active, but the reorganization action lets you take this pile and yeah, basically arrange it as you like, so that another soldier is going to the top and whatever. And this action means I can buy life points. So for two resources, uh, I can get one more life inside the arc. I could, I have three resources now. I could buy one more life and hope that this guy lasts longer. Because the longer it stays in the arc, the better it is for me, and the better, the more paragon I can loot. Okay. Then we have this action over here. Um, for three resources, I could use a normal attack symbol that I have already in my action pool and make a critical out of it. So plus one power, basically. Um, then the fifth action is uh, means I can spend three resources to roll a red die. I could do so, I could risk it, I could use my last three resources, roll the red die and see what happens, but I can also get a blank, so I might, might waste them. And the last action means I can just buy a paragon die and roll it once, in this case for four resources. I could roll it and see if I get any paragon, but I could also roll the blank, of course. Okay, um, in this case I'm going to end the turn for this player and keep the rest of my resources. Okay, it switches over to the blue player again, and now at the beginning of every player's turn, the one that is inside the arc at the moment gets to roll for paragon. Okay. So the green player is still inside the arc, and at the beginning of the blue player's turn, he gets to roll one paragon die. Gets another paragon. So the longer it stays in there, then the more players it survives, the more paragon it will loot, and the faster you will be victorious. Okay, blue player's uh, effect phase. Effect phase, you take a look at the base, he gets no resources, but he has a card effect now, during the effect phase, he gains two resources. So this card gives him two resources. Then we go to the dice phase, and this guy wants to be a bit, little bit more offensive to kick this one out of the arc. So he's going to use three red dice and three yellow ones. Okay, I'm going to keep this. And this, and I hope I can get an attack. Okay, at least one attack, but the resources are quite a lot. That gives me nine resources. I'm at 14, that's quite a lot. Now I need to get a good soldier. First I'm going to buy the quartermaster. No, sorry, I can't because I don't have another add-on slot. I can only buy a structure and override this one. So I'm going to upgrade my base. I spent four resources, that's the cost of this level, and I'm going to upgrade my base to the second level. Gives me the same defense as I had before, but I get plus one resource next turn and a second add-on slot over here. Now I'm going to spend two resources to buy the Quartermaster, that's a civilian card, and 
With this one I get soldiers for one resource cheaper than they normally cost. So I place this one over here. And now I'm going to buy uh, the Gunslinger. It normally cost me four, but with the Quartermaster it only costs me three resources. Put it in here. Oh, and the Titan, that's a pretty tough guy. But I cannot afford it, it costs seven. I would need to pay six and I only have five left. Okay, that's a shame. But um, what else could I do? I am going to buy another structure for three resources. And this time I'm, I buy the Forge. The Forge gives the soldiers in my war host, so every soldier that's in here, uh, plus one power. I need to override my research facility, so next turn I won't get the extra two resources, except, uh, in, except when I'm reorganizing my pile over here. Okay, so now I have this one attack symbol. I'm going to use it to make an attack. Uh, the Gunslinger has a power of three plus one for the arc. That would give me a power of um, four. And unfortunately, if I reduce it to by four, this guy still has two life points left. So what are my options right now? Let's see, I could buy another red die for two resources. I still have two. I could risk it. Maybe I get another attack symbol. And I think that's the best thing to do. But in this case, I'm going to buy an, an event for one resource. That's this one over here. The weapon supplies, because this one does the same as my action. It's just cheaper for one resource. So I will use that event and I get to roll a red attack die once. Maybe I'm lucky and I get another attack. No, I cannot attack it. Okay, in this case I'm going to end my turn over here and it becomes this player's turn again. He's still in the arc and at the beginning of its turn he's rolling the Paragon die and gets nothing this time. Okay, same thing. He wants to get some more resources. Oh, sorry, effect phase first. Effect phase, he immediately gets one resource from the base. He has no cards, so now we go to the dice phase. We roll, take these. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Then, let's trade them in for resources. That's four, six, seven resources. So he's up to 11. And I have two attacks. Okay, that looks quite good. So this player, what is he doing? He's base, he's giving, spending three resources to buy the gods here. Ah, and I made a big mistake. You see, this guy over here gives me one less reroll. So I wouldn't have gotten my last reroll. <laughs> and I can't remember what it was, so let's do that again. I'm starting first roll and now I only have one second roll. Let's move that down again. Uh, okay, so he gets no attacks, but he gets six, nine resources. And now we can go ahead. Okay, so he got no attacks. That's not so great. I guess he will just buy a warehouse that guarantees him one resource every turn. And he's going to upgrade a base. So another slot gets unlocked. Then he's going to buy the gods here. That gives him an additional reroll. So with this card, they would basically um, negate each other. He would lose one reroll, he gains one reroll. So everything is back to normal. And for the three resources over there, I'm going to buy one attack die and see if I can get an attack. No. Okay. This turn ends. It's becoming this one's turn again. Same as last time. He's still controlling the arc, so he gets his Paragon die and rolls and loots one Paragon. Okay. Now, this guy needs to do something. He's taking four red die and two 
of the real oak resource die. Dies. Let's hope to be, we get some attacks. Okay, that's the first. Second roll. Oh, that looks good. And one last roll. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so five resources plus one from my base. That's six. That's going up to seven then. And now we can do some damage. <laughs> I only have seven resources. Okay, that's still fine. I spent all of my seven resources and buy the big Titan over here. So it goes on top of the Gunslinger. And now I can cause some damage. I spend a normal attack to cause four damage on the Bomber. So two life points, this one is destroyed. This one moves into it. This player now controls the Ark. The Titan has six resistance plus two life points gives him eight. Okay. And after each turn it will generate an additional life point. Alright, that's pretty good. And since I destroyed a soldier card, I get to roll one paragon die. That's indicated here. And this player also gets its first paragon. Okay. Now I have some attacks left. I'm going to use one attack to attack this player's base. The base has a defense of 3, so I have a power of 4, that's definitely enough. I can attack it. This player has to decide if he wants to block or not. In this case, the recruit has the um, special ability that he always or she always needs to um, block an attack if it's possible. In this case it's possible, she needs to block. She has a resistance of 4, I have a power of 4, this one gets destroyed. So, I destroy the soldier card, I get to roll a paragon die. Alright. Now I'm using a critical attack. That's one power more, that's power five. Still enough to attack the base. This player cannot block it, so I'm getting through. I can now loot paragon from him, so I get my one die. And I'm trying to steal paragon. I'm stealing two. And I'm getting two. And now... I can choose one of these cards that I want to destroy. So I'm going to destroy this one over here. And then I have one last attack that I'm also going to use to attack, of course. Again, I can see Paragon. I get nothing. But I'm destroying this card over here. Oops, goes there. That was pretty bad for this one. But let's see if he can manage to get back. Okay, at the end of my turn, I think it's at the end, let me check. Uh, after each player's turn, he gets one life point. So at the end of this turn, he gets one more life point. It's this player's turn. We start again, effect phase, plus one resource, no cards. I'm choosing, <laughs> I guess it's doing the same thing. Hmm, might be tricky because I need enough resources to buy a soldier. So, I might want to go with with this option. Yeah, that looks fine. Did I did I roll for Paragon at the beginning of this player's turn? I guess not. This player's player can roll for Paragon at the beginning of this player's turn. I think I forgot that. Alright. Now we are back to the dice phase of this player. Okay. Some more resources would be nice. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, that's eight resources, moving up to nine. And I have two attacks and I somehow need to deal nine damage to get this guy out of there. So I guess I will buy the sniper in this case. That costs me four resources. So the sniper has a power of three, that would be three damage with the critical it would be another four that would be seven i still need to cause two more damage and i see an option for that i'm going to buy for two resources the explosive ammo that means my soldiers in my uh, all my soldiers gain plus one power until the end of my turn in this case the sniper would get a power of four 
Okay, that, that's pretty good. So with the power of 4, this die will cause 4 damage. This die would cause 5 damage and together it would be 9. So that's enough to kill the Titan. That went pretty well. Okay, it has resistance of 3 plus 2 players. And I destroyed a soldier card, so I get to roll one paragon die. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm back into the arc with this player now. And I can see some tricky thing I can do right now. I'm using my last three resources to buy the reanimate card. The reanimate card says, place the top card of the soldier discard pile into your war host. The top card is the titan I just destroyed. So I can place this one into my war host, which is pretty nice, because it saved, saved me a lot of resources. Okay, that's the turn for this guy. Back to this one. He's controlling the arc, he gets to roll Paragon. Okay. And this one. What is he doing? Yeah, let's do it like that. risk it. Okay. Okay. Uh, my base gives me one. Should have done that before, but you can also do it when you trade in your dice. Um, then I get four more. And I have quite some attacks. So at this point, I guess you have already understood how everything works. Um, of course, it's a two-player game now, so we will have some more fighting going on. Um, and the game is faster overall, as you can see. This one already has six Paragon, this one is back to five. And it will go this way on and on. I can buy more stuff now and do some more attacks. But actually, you have seen everything you can do in the game. Um, and yeah, I think it doesn't really make sense to, to play a whole game now because you, you can guess what, what happens and how it works. Uh, yeah, and so I hope you enjoyed this a little bit and it uh, could clarify um, how the game works, how the basics work. And yeah, if you have any other questions, then just feel free to ask us. Um, and yeah, we will try to answer it. So I think I'm going to finish this now, yeah. All right, then thanks for watching it and yeah. Have fun with the game.